Hey everyone, welcome back to Aliens on Toast Gaming, and Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. It's the end of the year, as it so be, and uh, to celebrate the end of this year, today we're going to be doing a Q&A, and uh, the Q&A is kind of a mix between Q&A and FAQ, um, because some of these are going to be taken from YouTube, some of these are going to be taken from the Aliens on Toast Discord channel, which, link in the description if you want to join that. Um, so let's just jump right in and answer some of these questions. Some of them pretty easy, some of them not so much. So, DZ Nation asks, How much does a Pop-Tart cost where you live? And this is actually a pretty controversial topic that he has decided to bring up, because Pop-Tarts are considered an international food here, because they're not native to Australia. So, Pop-Tarts are ridiculously expensive. If you want to go, like, We've got a brand over here called Kellogg's, I'm not sure if that's anywhere else, but we've got Kellogg's brand Pop-Tarts, which are about $5. But if you want, like, Pop-Tart brand Pop-Tarts, they're like, like $10, $11 each, which is ridiculous. Like, that's like half an hour's work for a Pop-Tart. So, Pop-Tarts are expensive here. Question two is from Deinonychus65, and that is, will you play Jurassic World the game on the channel? And that's actually a really interesting question. A, because there's two Jurassic World The Game games. Uh, one of them is the mobile game, which I won't be playing because I have yet to figure out a way to play mobile games properly, and I'm, I'm not a big fan of mobile games. I mean, with the only exception being maybe Pokemon Go. Um, but that's fine, that's fine. Um, however, I will definitely be playing, definitely, definitely, definitely be playing the Jurassic World Park Builder game that will be coming out next year. I am ridiculously excited for that. Basically, you put dinosaurs in a zoo, and I'm gonna play that game. Doesn't matter how good the quality is, I will be playing it, and I will enjoy it. Um, so yes, I will definitely be playing that Jurassic World game. Goji Rex asks, what's your favorite theropod in the aisle? And, oh god, I'm gonna, I am, this is gonna test my dinosaur knowledge. Theropod is the two-legged, like, Rex and stuff, right? Because sauropod is, like, the pews and, like, apatosaurs and those kind of things. If I'm correct, my favorite theropod in the aisle, at the moment, would probably be... Ooh, that's a good one. Either the Allosaur or... If the Dillo counts, Dillo. Dillo, 100%. I love the Dillo. The Dillo is one of those dinosaurs that just sounds menacing, looks menacing, but is only like three feet tall. So he, t he just ticks all the boxes. I mean, Dillo is ridiculously kind of lame at the moment, and if you're playing on a sandbox server, there's really no point playing Dillo, but he is a lot of fun. I like the Dillo. Um, however, if Dillo does not qualify, then Allosaurus. Um, Larrick asks, is there a clade or specific species of dinosaur that was not represented in the aisle that you wish was? Uh, now for those of you who are not up on bio biology terms, um, such as I, here is the meaning of clade, because I had to google it. Um, and yes, there is a species that I, I wish was more represented in the aisle, and I'm hoping is still kind of on the table, and that is the crocodilians. I would love to see some Dinosuchus, or some, like, even some of the, the smaller dinosaurs, like, uh, well, not dinosaurs, but, uh, crocodilians, like, uh, Caprosuchus, or, like even, like, even the small dinosaurs, if, like, small crocs, why am I saying dinosaurs? Like, small crocs, like, say your body dies in the water, it would be cool to see these tiny little crocs come up, nibble at the sides of the, the, the carcass, and swim away. I think that would be adorable. Um, and yeah, that, that, pretty much any crocodile in the aisle gets all the winning takes from me. Uh, Mr. Rooster Vulture asks, what's your favorite non-generic dinosaur? And I've actually said it in this video already. One of the dinosaurs that I loved as a kid, like, absolutely adored. I mean, I did an assignment in grade seven purely about this dinosaur where the entirety of it was just me drawing this dinosaur over and over again. I got a B somehow, um, and that is actually Deinonychus. I freaking loved Deinonychus as a kid. Uh, after I saw Jurassic Park, um, my parents bought me this big, thick dinosaur book, 
Um, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go look up Velociraptor, and looked up Velociraptor, found out it's about the same size as this Yoshi that I have here, um, and was really disappointed. I was like, that's that's not the dinosaur I fell in love with in that movie. So I kept flicking through the book. It had it was just dinosaur species, dinosaur species, dinosaur species. It's an awesome book, and if I can find it again, I'm gonna read through that book now. Uh, but uh, I got to this one page, and I was like, that one. That's the dinosaur. That's the dinosaur that should have been in Jurassic Park, and it's exactly the same! Um, Jurassic Park came out, and a few months later, I'm pretty sure this dinosaur was discovered. So, Deinonychus is like this crazy film version, but in real life, which is kind of cool. And it's like vicious, it's cruel, like it's just an awesome dinosaur. Um, and it just doesn't get the recognition it should. And I'm just a little bit disappointed about that, but Deinonychus is awesome. JJ uh, Abraham Lincolns asks, My hair is always dry. Any tips? And to that I say yes. Coconut oil is really good. Otherwise what you can do is uh, make sure you condition your hair properly, but starting about an inch or two from the roots of your hair. Um, if you've got really short hair, then you might want to just like rinse it, wash it out, be kind of quick about it. You want to put some moisture into your hair. It's good like that. Uh, but coconut oil is amazing. Uh, Catcake14 asks, What is it like inside your hair? I've actually had this question like three or four times now on the YouTube channel, but I decided to go with Catcake's one. Good question, Catcake14. Um, so, you know, let's just um, find out what is it like in inside my hair. Space. The final frontier. Good, good. You got a good sample. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch that footage back later and see what it's like. Okay, so Chibi asks, what? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna shorten this because this is a long question. But uh, what slash who got you started? Um, and that's the first part of the question. The the answer is actually twofold because it's it, it's one person really got me started. Two things got me started. It's it's a bit awkward. Okay, so let's start with the things. So firstly, I like made my debut on YouTube um, with animation, and I like started my animation channel, uploaded there, and um, I just really enjoyed making stuff that other people was watching. And Newgrounds is amazing. If you're into arts, like music, the actual like digital art animation, post it to Newgrounds because that shit is the bomb. Um, and yeah, I kind of slowly migrated all that stuff over to YouTube. And then through YouTube, I started to get inundated with like the YouTube culture, which at that time was the emerging gaming culture. Um, and I started following this like little unknown YouTuber um, called Markiplier back then, um, just because I was like, that guy's got a freaking sweet voice. I like that guy. Um, and I kept animating, kept like just doing my thing and kind of put him to the back of my mind. And a couple of years later, I think, um, I jumped on YouTube, I saw Markiplier had uploaded a video, I watched it in its entirety, and I was like, damn, this stuff's actually good. He doesn't just have a good voice, he's an actual good presenter. Um, so I started actually watching his stuff uh, over and over again, uh, and one of his videos was uh, Squat Simulator, which I actually animated on my channel. Um, I'll put a link down in my channel below to the, the animation one. And so I, I did this uh, squats video and it kind of exploded at that time. It was kind of like as Markiplier was kind of exploding, I kind of rid on the coattails of that. Um, so that was really cool. And, uh, and I, was, I was kind of like, oh yeah, YouTube is actually, like, this is fun when things go really well. Um, but that's not really got me into the gaming side. What got me into the gaming side was I saw that Markiplier plus a whole bunch of other YouTube gaming people started doing charity streams, and I was like, man, that's awesome. I, I never even thought that, you know, get raising money for charity was even possible on the internet like that, and I thought, that's such a cool and unique way of doing things, and I thought, hey, well, you know, I've got a lot of free time. <laughs> How little that lasted. Uh, I've got a lot of free time, so why don't I start a gaming channel and maybe I can donate money to some local charities or something like that. And that's how my gaming channel evolved. Um, I, at first I was streaming just as much as I was uploading to YouTube. However, very shortly after that my internet just tanked 
and has been tanked ever since. I've never been able to stream since those early days, although I want to so bad. But uh, it's just been one of those things where like, I've always wanted to do charity stuff and I haven't really had the opportunity this year just because I've been so goddamn busy with stuff. Uh, but if you haven't seen, I do have a shirt st store on um, Redbubble? Redbubble? Um, and uh, I am donating money through the shirt sales to charity. So if you buy a shirt, an Aliens on Toe shirt, I will be donating a portion of that money to charity. Uh, it's a portion of my profits, not Redbubble's profits, unfortunately. So, like, it, it's not much in the end. But I figure even a little bit is something. And we've got to start off small. You've, you've got to, like, try and help who you can with what you can. Um, and then just move on from there. But that was, that was kind of a long-winded explanation of how and what and where I got started. Um, but the second question that Chibi asked is, will you ever play any non-dinosaur games? And yes, I will. Uh, I do enjoy dinosaur games, and I think the channel at the moment is kind of a dinosaur genre channel. Um, and that's fine, I really enjoy that stuff, but I also enjoy non-dinosaur games. Uh, the problem is, that I'm having at the moment, I guess, is uh, that I've got to try and keep it dinosaur-ish themed. So, uh, like playing kind of dinosaur-related games, or like monster games, or nature games, something that's a, a, like on the same kind of level as dinosaur games, and then we can kind of branch out from there. Like that's that's the like the plan, if you can call it such. But um, yeah, so that's that's the idea. I would like to do non-dinosaur, more non-dinosaur games. Um, I just got to figure out kind of how to do them. Because there's, there's a lot of options, but just trying to keep it all on the same kind of branding that the channel has at the moment is the awkward part. Um, and lastly, Ender Shadow asks, uh, Will you ever play on the Realism servers again, and will you record on those servers? Uh, and the answer is yes. Um, recently, I haven't really had time to dedicate to the Isle, which is why I've been playing a lot of the semi-realism stuff, because it's sandbox. You can just choose your dinosaur and jump in. But I would really like to go back and play some like proper realism where you've got to progress up. Just because it gives you like a sense of completion. Um, like you're, you're playing as this big ass dinosaur and you want to play it properly. And people, for example, like on the semi-realism, you're going to get assholes that just spawn as a shant and will protect everything in the vicinity. They're not playing realistically. But in the realism ones, uh, there's a lot more of these smaller tier dinosaurs. There's a lot more tacos, oros, like diablos are pretty common, packies are pretty common. Like, but none of those massive assholes just jumping in, ruining everyone's fun by playing unrealistically on a realism server. Um, and then kind of, uh, like, yeah, it, it, it's a lot better on the realism servers in that respect. Uh, well, the ones that are progression, anyway. Uh, so I do want to jump back into that once I've got more time, which is looking like that'll be early next year. Uh, but yes, I do want to do that. But anyway, that is all the questions for now. Um, if you do want to check out the Discord, there is a section there called Ask Away. And if you have any questions that you want to see in a future video, post them in there, and I will be using them in the future. Uh, but anyway, happy holidays, everyone. Merry Christmas. Um, I think, hold on, Abby's asleep here. She'll... Ugh. Hello. Yeah, I woke you up. You're not, you're not too thrilled about that. Hey. Mm. You're grumpy. Anyway, Merry Christmas for everyone here, and see you later. Bye!